just to give you some idea of what we've had for the last three weeks now really is a nightmare. So let's sit in the relative calmness of the truck and uh, give you a bit of an update. So the honey is off. I managed to get the last off this week in the wind and the rain. Um, we've had, to give you some idea of how bad it's been this year at the start of the year, we've had no mating of the first cells I did all those weeks ago in that cell builder. And then what I did was when I pulled the last load of cells, I banked them and I banked 30 cells and I got them in I think Sunday or Monday last week, and we've had not one single flying day since then where any queens could go and mate. So that's two lots of queens at the moment. Probably the second lot won't get mated. So you have to go through, see if the bees haven't killed them already, because often they do, and then put a third one in. But the problem is when you get to the third one, it's gonna be 21 days if that queen mates pretty quickly, so 24 days before any, 25 days before any young bees will actually hatch. So all in all, it's not looking good at the moment. We are apparently going to get a change in weather. Um, everybody has been saying this is the worst spring uh, they can know in living memory. It's not that we've had an excessive amount of cold, an excessive amount of rain, an excessive amount of wind. It's just we've had all three continuously, you know, all at the same time with no calm days in between. To give you some idea, normally come April, May, most of every, most of the years in North Brittany here, we get a few days between the storms and you get a calm spell, Queenston Gulf for mate. We've had quite a bit of swarming still when we had that warm spell that that sparked it all off. And um, so colonies have swarmed. And the interesting thing is none of the swarms have gone far. They've all stayed within the apiary because there's just no way for them to go. They just feel they should issue. So they've popped out no matter what we did. And none of those colonies have mated existing queens that were left in the colony here. In this particular area, I know. And I've heard the same right down the south of France, right across northern Europe, Germany, um, all the other European, northern European countries. The jet stream has gone so far south this spring that we are basically in a completely unstable northerly, northwest, westerly airflow. And it's caused absolute havoc. And I would not be surprised if all the drones now are going to get binned out early. So the chances of making earlier gains on what was a bad thing are probably going to be slimmer than we previously hoped. So um, I have one thing up my sleeve. We have our main flow starting in three weeks, three to four weeks normally. And it may be a little bit later this year because of the cold. But I say this every year and no matter what we seem to have, it does often come exactly the same time, the second week of June. So our main flow is coming, but I've got 50 queens coming Monday and Tuesday, probably arriving Tuesday. They're mated queens. So for me, that might mean some extra honey in the colonies that were otherwise not mated. Because you imagine, if, as I said before, if you get a colony that is already down on numbers and losing bees fast, and it's, the numbers are falling before it can recover, it needs 21 days, even with a mated queen laying, before it starts to rise again. That is the issue we have. Now, with virgins, you've got more to wait for. With mated queens, at least you're going to get a plethora of eggs laid very quickly once that's accepted. And on the positive side, a lot of these queens will be accepted very easily because there's no brood, there's nothing in the colonies of the swarmed colonies that will stop them accepting that queen. 
unless they're going drone low, which will happen within a week if we don't get these coins in. That's the issue. Once you start losing your brood and it's gone, you've only got a week or so before you, for a few of them, become drone layers. So as I said, the, the honey harvest was in. It's okay. I'm, I've got issues going on at the moment I'm not going to talk about. Uh, and they could be quite uh, impactful in the long term. Uh, that I've got to deal with at the moment. I've got to concentrate on my on the current. I've got to focus on the current thing at the moment though, and just see where we go. Um, it's all a bit. <laughs> for my first year, it's kind of trial by um, elements, and I think the elements have won up till now. We are looking at a better period of weather coming up and it's supposed to settle down so my cell builder there is going to be restocked i can't even get in my colonies here i can't even get in my colonies one's blown over as you saw before i can't even get into my colonies now to take out brood to put in my cell builder that's how bad it's been i i honestly mean that there's not been one day where it's been good enough to go into hives and i mean i would go in if i could i really would but i just can't the bees are so unhappy and I'm and when I was in last week taking my last honey off the colonies are really way way behind where they should be for this time of year they are suffering from lack of sunshine lack of forage there's still a bit of pollen coming in but they've just not got that energy and it really is dire I I I am absolutely kind of heartbroken about the queens I haven't mated. That was going to be my chance to requeen lots of colonies. I, what I'm looking at now is damage limitation. What I'm looking at is trying to get at least one colony mated, one round mated, and then maybe a second one so I can still requeen and make more nukes. But now we've got, we are nearly June. We've got one week of May left, okay? So that means if we get those if we get those queens in in uh, 10 days after the cell so it's going to be at least mid-June before we've got the first queens mated. We then remove those, we get a second lot in, and then really, there's, I doubt we'll get a third, even if it was good. So it's 14 days after that. We're really looking at our last graft mid to end of July at the latest. So this season looks like we've lost half of it already. And all those people who were, you know, posting pictures of cell building and all that, they're all like now going, God, I wish I'd never bothered. Same as here. Because none of those cells that I made in those live videos, none of them have mated. None of them have come back. I introduced two loads, as I just said, and the second lot hasn't mated yet either. And then you can imagine the complications following that, trying to bring all the stuff through. So... Really, this is exactly what bee farming is all about. This is the highs and lows in a nutshell. I've got good colonies. I've got a lot of queen right colonies. And the way things are going may well have a good nectar flow for the summer. So I harvested about a ton of spring honey. So it's just under, just over three and a bit barrels. So I'm fairly happy with that. It gives me some cash to spend, not to spend, to pay some bills, some much needed bills. And I've got to sell that now and keep some to put in my own pots to sell at home. And that's the way I want to go. But uh, it's all going to be very tight. The little extras that I was hoping I'd make here and there haven't come to fruition. And um, I, I don't know what the next week's going to be like. You know, I've got pollen sub I've mixed up to put on my min on my nukes that have got mated queens. That that's going on this week as well as feed. Because it gives me three weeks then to, well, what, what happens when you make up colonies with queens that are mated is I put my, I make my nukes, my splits, I put the mated queens in. Um, and if I can put virgins in others, I do. I've done the two, but I've done 50, approximately 50 nukes with mated queens. Now, at the time I made them up, there's loads and loads of food around. The colonies were, had three frames of brood that's hatched out, as well as the bees that accompanied them when I made up the nukes. So they've had a really good feed. But in hindsight, 
I really should have made them up with two frames of brood because the colonies I took them from have also dipped and because they haven't been able to catch up again, they're now behind. So you kind of see how you've got to manage your strategies very carefully according to the weather. So the pollen sub I've got really needs to go on everything, not just the nukes, because those nukes have laid up loads and loads of the frames, but the bees won't hatch out for 21 days and that you kind of get a flash laying where that new queen is released, she's really keen, she's inside, there's plenty of food, she lays everything up, and then she almost goes into like a, a pause mode. Because you can't really give that nuke any more space because it's too small. There's no hatching bees emerging to give that, that colony purpose. It's, dead, it's on pause, it's laid up, it's waiting. Obviously the queen is laying a bit here and there, yes, but... It's not got that rotation of brood yet. And that's when you can get supersedure issues. And I haven't got brood to start putting into my nukes to give them a boost so that they'll give me some honey. It's all very, very close. Yes, if I use some of my queens that I've got coming, not to make nukes, but just to requeen colonies, as long as the colonies have got fairly good amounts of bees, they will probably accept the queen well, as I said before, and they will get going. Because as soon as you've got a laying queen, that colony then will start bringing in nectar and putting it up in the supers if it's got a laying queen. Regardless of how many bees there are, they'll bring in some. So that's the, that's the bonus of, you know, that's the bonus I've got to think of um, in, when it kicks off. But um, I, it, it, it unfortunately had to be this year that we had the worst spring on record, the first year that I go solo. And now I'm thinking, hmm, did I really throw away all my gardening gear? Do I need to be getting that out again? Because um, I'm not going to be at this stage, but it makes you wonder, you know, there's bills to pay, there's things to do. And uh, with weather like this, but there again, I wouldn't have got a lot done with my clients if I had managed to keep them. But what actually happened was, as I said in my previous videos, that my clients have naturally sold up and moved off and I just haven't looked for new ones as replacements and obviously Brexit and all that malarkey. Um, so I've ended up now just with my bees. I have a good stock. Um, I have breeder queens. I have everything I need. It's just I've got to work so hard over the next six weeks, six to eight weeks to get lots of queens made. Which in itself is not a problem. Everything's here. I can make up other cell builders. I can keep this one stocked. I can make 150 queens next week. And hopefully they'll be mating this time. It may just completely turn around, as things often do with farming. So I'm quietly hopeful. As you can see, I've managed to get hold of a Bluetooth microphone that enables me to use my phone, because obviously I damaged the mic when I dropped the phone in a barrel of honey. So that's all been uh, a little bit of thing to sort out, but it seems to be pretty good and I'm not missing any calls um, because of it. So um, that should do me for the rest of the year until I get, uh, I can change my phone. The way it works over here on my contract is I get, I, I get a phone at a cheap rate if I maintain my contract and then I'll change it at the end of the year, but the end of the year is December for, for the phone. So I've got to just keep it till then. So at least it still works in all the other modes. But anyway, um, it's not a very good, I'm not a very happy boy. I'm, I'm looking at everyone else and they're all absolutely screaming as well. I'm seeing people in bee farmers in the UK who I speak to a lot. Uh, there's a group of bee farmers. We have a chat evening now. And um, they are up that creek with that broken paddle as well. They are having, I've actually got some honey and I had, I'm kind of very careful about what I say because I don't want to upset them because I, it's just luck that we got it. We had those, we had that week of good weather just after we put our supers on and that's when most of our honey seems to have gone in. Everywhere else in the UK, the rape crop has basically been a failure. In Scotland, where it's just coming into flower, it's been blasted by the cold weather earlier on. So that's never really done much. There's obviously other places they've got contracts for pollination. That's kind of okay but even then the wind is so strong even the shelter belts even the shelter belts in the cherry orchards where they've got um protection against most of the wind it bees aren't flying because it's too cold uh, i um 
everyone is kind of bowled over. I think perhaps we've had it too good for too long and this is what we can expect sometimes. Or is it global warming? Or is it climate change that's causing this? Because what's happening is we seem to be getting patterns of weather that are very wet for a very long time, then very hot for a very long time, then very dry for a very long time. And this is, if you read into that with the theories and what scientists are saying, this is exactly what they said would happen. I don't know whether it's true. I'm always remain open minded. I don't know. But I can't help but notice these things um, with my bees. Because bees, I say we are, we follow what the bees do, we follow their lead, and we do what the bees do, and all we do is try and enhance what they're doing, like queen rearing, like bringing in nectar, all that. And the bees are telling us that things are pretty grim this spring. Things are really difficult. And we've got to nurture them and we've got to think of them as well. And like talking about extra pollen sub on all my colonies, regardless of whether they're uh, nukes or not, because they're just going to need that boost before the summer flow. And then in the summer flow, they might catch up to where they should be before I can make some late splits again. So hopefully queens I've mated. But we shall see. The other thing as well, I mean, swarming, I was talking about just now about these temperatures we're getting. We had a period of three days that was 24 to 26 degrees, which is crazy. And we're getting this kind of patterns, as I said just now, that no matter what kind of bees you have, everything seems to want to swarm. No matter what, whatever queens you buy, from whatever pedigree, they all go. And the reason behind that is I think the weather is so bad for so long, then suddenly it flips to so good and everything is there. No matter how good your genetics, the bees just forget all their standard kind of patterns and they just go into swarm mode because there's nothing else to stop that. Whereas in pre the reason why I say that is in previous years, you get a slow increase in things. When the nectar flow starts, it goes from like nothing to a little bit and then a bit more and then a bit more over a few days, weeks. And then you get the peak flow, whereas we're not seeing that at all at the moment. So I just don't know what to think. I was always a bit skeptical skeptical of uh, climate change and global warming. And I can only say what I see. This is exactly what they said we would have. And is that is that part of the pattern or is just the fact that this is a tiny period in a huge, long history of weather that this is completely normal? We just happen to have no break in the in the persistent wind and the persistent showers and the persistent um cold there's just been no break of it it's not been exceptionally cold we've had no snow we've had no frost but it's just totally out of sync with what we normally get for this time of year so on that note um i'm going to sign off i i'm not really in a mood for going into beehives because it's just not fair on the bees they're going to be grumpy I'm looking forward to just getting the last bit of my admin done this week, which is actually the only thing I've managed to get done. And after the honey crop, I've tidied everything up at the workshop. Everything's put away. The honey's in the barrel. I'm putting some into pots. So that in that, on that side of things, everything is where it should be. There's no mess to clear up. Everything's away. It's all tidy. But it just kind of typifies how you've got to work and how adaptable you have to be. So, bye for now. I hope the next time we speak, things are turning around. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.